Conference 2. introduced to the world if they had just had the fortune of getting a video on MTV. Yeah. Because it, 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 it was a game breaker for a lot of people. It sure was. I mean, how many careers actually were propelled, and not only just propelled, but were started because people got to see them on, mm -hmm. uh, on TV and got to see the video. I, I know that's how I found you guys. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, these guys are awesome. I, I've got to get their album. I tell yeah, you, boom. The, the, it, was a, it was a blessing and a curse though, uh -huh. because you became almost pigeonholed by that video. I mean, and that True. happens with a lot of True. bands, you know. Oh, that's the band with that video, you yeah. know. It's like, well, you know, ZZ Top is more than just legs, you know right. what I'm saying? Right, right. And uh, so, if you only had a couple of videos or whatever that people are able to see, sometimes it would, it would, you know, it had that adverse effect. But it's just like anything else, you know. It's just like in radio, you know. You know, Show a Little Love was, was a big song for us. Mm -hmm. And True Believer was a big song yeah. for us. But those are like really just a fraction of what the band's about. When you listen to the other stuff, people are like, that's the same band sometimes? <laughs> the only way they can really tell is because sonically you can hear the style. Uh -huh. You can hear my guitar style, yeah. you can hear the, the, the vocal style, whatever. Mm -hmm. So you get that, but that is just one like segment of what the oh, band okay. Well, I, I totally checked it all out after that. You know, she likes it on top, one of my favorite songs. Is it really? I <laughs> love it. Um, actually, I think we were trying to talk you into playing in Oklahoma that year. Probably. <laughs> so. That's a problem when you have so many records that it's hard to get the set list. Exactly. Exactly where you so, want it. So, um, what are your challenges now with, uh, with internet, no MTV? Um, how do you, how do you guys how have you guys adjusted your sales? Well, um, I would say the biggest challenge is just that people have become numbed out by things, mm -hmm. and um, you know they get to the point where they see so much everywhere that nothing's exciting anymore. You know, back in when you first came out, when record companies had maybe four or five bands, mm -hmm. and they put everything into those, they believed in those things, the core of that band. You know, they didn't care if it took three or four records, they believed in that band and they were gonna stay with it. Yep. Now it's like you have to almost be successful before they'll give you a chance to be successful. So those things, fortunately for us, you know, we made our niche and we, you know, we, we created the Lillian Axe thing while things were on the decline and not fully in the toilet like yeah, they are yeah, now, right? right? right. So, mm -hmm. you know, we were able to reach a lot of people, you know, so even if people haven't stayed up with us over the years, they'll remember us from this and that. Yeah. And that's fine with me because all it takes is a spark because I'm, you know, as soon as they get introduced to us and they really dig into it, uh -huh. then they either go nuts over it or it's just not for them. See, you know, that's kind of what I did with my daughter. I was like, You've got to hear Lillian X. Now she is like a diehard. Oh, yeah, she, oh, cool. yeah, she loves Lillian X. That's and cool. uh, yeah, she's she's a, a true believer. <laughs> and, but that you know, but the kids though, they only have their parents to, to help them to understand mm -hmm. about this stuff. And I always go back to the fact that when you look at musical trends, what other real I, I wanna say, I don't wanna I hate to use certain words because they kind of pigeonhole things, but not a trend, but a, a, a movement, a time. Mm -hmm. What other actual segment of popular music in the last 50 years still has such a diehard following? Yeah. You don't see, and, and I love the 90s grunge bands. I'm, I, I love mm -hmm. Alice in Chains and Pearl Jam, and uh -huh. five or six that made up the whole thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I love those bands. But you don't, there's not a, mo a movement for that. There's not tours going out with these bands yeah. because actually there was only a few of them mm -hmm. but it was it was not a particular style but you don't hear anything about it anymore right what happened after that pretty much nothing yeah. what did you go into from the year 2000 on we've just been in it's almost like a, a, a void I, 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 a void I, I, that I, I agree I, I agree what do you, you think is going to be the next thing what's going to save it what's going to spark it you, you know, know? I, I don't think that it's going to stem from a style of music. I think it's going to stem from some type of 
awareness in, in people's minds. You get out there and go to the shows. That's where it's the live music aspect of it is the most important thing too. But here's the kicker on that: it's more expensive. Yeah, people don't go out to see live shows as much. Why? I don't have to. Mm -hmm. I have an 80 inch TV and I can sit back and pull YouTube up and I can watch the KISS concert from last night. Right. Here's Led Zeppelin in 75. Yeah. Got my pizza, drink, <laughs> you know, my cat or whatever. Yeah. Why do I have to go out? Like I went to a Saints game last week. Mm -hmm. right? Now, the tickets are 200 bucks a piece. Uh -huh. $40 for park. The traffic was so bad that I got in there five minutes late. Uh, and the seats, the best seats in the house, I couldn't even see on the other side of the play because it was almost eye level. Yeah. Like, so you've got to just drop You've three got to plan for this three weeks out. Just to see. Just well, why do we do it? We go for the event, right? Uh -huh. With live music, it's people don't have that kind of expendable income to, to go and they're selective about what they do. Right. Now, the fact that you have all these other ways to get a similar kind of experience, yeah. people aren't going to go out. The live music scene is not being supported by the local radio. It's not being supported by the local journalists. Yes. It used to be where, you know, our Lillian Axe is coming to town tonight. Well, the radio station, in conjunction with the newspaper, in conjunction with the club, we're going to do giveaways, we're going to yeah. do tickets. We're going to interview the band. They're going to come in and gonna play live on the station acoustically later. Uh -huh. we're, going to, we're going to work together to build the scene. You don't get that yeah. anywhere. It, you know what you get? True. You get local journalists that. that think they're music experts. And right. Instead of trying to build it, they want to tell why they think this band's new record sucks <laughs> and isn't any good anymore. You know, yeah. It's like there's no like, you know where the communion and the... And the the uh, partnership and the we should all share for each it's other. It's in the fans. That's yeah. where it is. Mm -hmm. It's in the fans because every, you know all of the other uh, mechanisms that should be supporting each other. Like I said, radio uh -huh. and press and the live venues. You know, it, it's too much ego in there, and it's too much. They don't work together. I agree. And you see what's happening. Yeah. See what's happening. Then you have uh, the advent of internet, which, on some ways. Is great because people from all over the world can easily tune into you. Mm -hmm. But it's also a curse too because it's you know I go I go find ways. I don't have to buy your record because I can go to YouTube and I can listen yeah. to the whole thing every day with just a clickable button. Right. That hurts the artists. Yeah. You see, that's the problem that everybody's like, when are you putting a new record out? When are you doing this? When are you coming here? It's really difficult for me to go and and tour Europe. You know when. When nobody's paying for my well, album nobody's at all. paying for records. Yeah. So the, the record company's not going to dish out the tour yeah. support needed and whatnot. It's it's just a big mess. Yeah. But you know, I don't. I really don't know what the solution is. The solution I think has got to come from the core. It's got to come from the individuals. You know, like I don't. You know, I like to have a CD. I want to have a physical you product. Read if I want to download it onto something else. Yeah. Fine, yeah. but it's going up on my shelf, yes. right? That's how we and work. that's actually a smart thing to do because what if you lose your items or right. whatever you know? But uh, that and, and I want to see the artwork and I want to see the band. And I, the lineup, like who are they exactly. thanking? Yeah. Every record we've put out, we have we have made very concerted efforts to make sure that it was art. Yeah, and it was it was something that people would want to just sit right. there and listen to because that's what I was when I was a kid. Absolutely, but they don't know. You know, you you download it, you miss everything. Um, of course, you know it's it's easier to listen to. But that whole aspect of it is just that kids are desensitized. I don't even That's, know. That was the whole fun of it. Getting that CD, taking it out of the wrapper, opening it up, you put it in, and yep. you're reading the lyrics. Reading the lyrics. I mean, yeah, we exactly. put the lyrics pretty much on just uh -huh. about every one of our records. Uh -huh. I, I, I mean, that's the spiritual point of it. I want you to know what I'm saying when you're listening to right. it. Right. And I mean, I mean, how many guy used to do that with Alice Cooper records? And I'd be so disappointed if they didn't have the lyrics, you know, <laughs> and, or whatever. But, um, it's got to come back where people are going to have to just start being more respectful. If you want your bands to keep playing, keep making records, you better support them. I agree. You know, but is it different in Europe? I, I know the scenes, of, uh, uh, the you know, the music, live music over there is just a little bit. Well, I'll tell it's you what was different. <laughs> it, it's, it, I'll tell you where I noticed the differences. Because the last time we went there, we played in some countries like Czech Republic and uh -huh. um, Hungary, Austria, places we had never been before. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it still suffers in the aspect of the same types of things. I mean, um, things getting watered down or whatever. But the actual, the fans, I'll tell you what was unique. We, we co-headlined a festival in Essen, Germany. Mm -hmm. An all day long yeah. festival. It's about 10,000 people, I guess. Yeah. And um, everybody, they wore jackets with patches. That was like, you know, one out of every two people had these patches. Uh -huh. And you would see Poison, Aerosmith, Slayer, Metallica, mm -hmm. Kiss. It didn't matter. It was a rock music. Yeah. And we played, and all day long there were like AOR bands like Iron Savior, I think, was on there, and mm -hmm. Human Zoo, and all these like AOR rock bands, you know, like 80s style, you know, big anthem stuff. And then we played, and then the band that co headlined with us was called Asphyx, which was a death metal band. Uh -huh. We were on the stage wow. playing with death metal bands, and I'm like, and the people, they enjoyed it as much. In us as they did being that. diversified like, yeah it was such diversification yeah. and, and it, that i kind of I, I i see that more overseas than i do here in, maybe in that is what you know? what it is i mean and I, I i just know that um when we talk to people they're like yeah the europe scene is just a, a little better than well a lot better than over here and, and i'm just thinking there's got to be something that they're doing that we could do here well I'll tell you another thing that a lot of bands from here feel like that because when we go over there I mean you feel like you're more appreciated uh -huh. because those people never get the opportunity to see you this yeah. is a once-in-a-lifetime situation for some of these people you know yeah and um, I mean when we went over there there were people that you know we've been to Europe know, five six times or something like that uh -huh. and then I was um, amazed at how many people I mean they would they would be really emotional whether it came out like tears crying hugging and giving you gifts and all that kind of stuff. And they were really, it was an emotional experience for them to just That's say amazing. hi to you and stuff like That's that. That's amazing. Over here, it's like, um, you know, it's a different mentality as far as like, you know, they're, they're jaded. You know, they're yeah. just like, we're used to this kind of That's stuff. Terrible. Yeah, That's it, terrible. It really is. But that, that's a cultural difference mm -hmm. too. We're spoiled here, in, over here in this country. Mm -hmm. you know, we get everything taken care of. For us, and you know, it, it is something to be said that you know that this culture is one of the. the, the I would say the uh, um, you know people get, get, get. bitch and complain. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it, it's a totally different. I mean, we have more things given to us for free than anywhere in the world. Yeah. People are allowed, to. and so we take that for granted. So when those people you go over there and they've been listening to you for 20 years and they get to shake your hand, <laughs> you know, but. And it's, it puts me in a weird boat because I'm like, I, I really appreciate it, but I don't want them to freak, don't freak out so much. Right. You know, I'm like, just, <laughs> hey, how's it going, man? It was a good hamburger place around there, whatever. Yeah. But it really means a lot when you get, uh, when people, when you realize that you're touching people all over the world, man, it just from, you know, from writing music. So that's one reason why um, I, I take it as seriously as I do. Yeah. Of course, it's fun. It's oh, yeah. But the, whenever I write a song or we're performing or whatever, that that transcends just you know any other possible uh, means of expression. Right. Because that's just it, it, and it happens all over the world, man. You know. And so um, I, when we went to Japan, that was another situation that was like you really notice how important just your little piece of your life that you're giving to people how important it is and it's like it's humbling you know yeah um, I mean that that was an amazing situation they don't speak the language but they're singing yeah. your lyrics yeah. back and yeah. that, that, it's just the weirdest thing oh, yeah, man just... you know rough and raw yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but and, 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 and so polite and then so that has uh -huh. but you know people are great here in the States too. Yeah. it's just a different it's a little bit more uh, taken for granted here I guess yeah so how would uh, a member of your family or your parents or something describe Lillian Axe to somebody that's never heard of him? My mom would say, that's my son's hobby. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's funny because I... Decades uh, later. I, I, um, I have a TV show that's being shot to network. It's a oh. ghost hunting TV show. Oh, cool. Right? And um, 
And so now it's always like, this is my son. My mom's like, this is my son. You know, he's a musician. Now it's, this is my son. He's a ghost hunter. That's awesome. Oh, <laughs> now, now I'm intrigued. Yeah. I can get some information on okay. that. And um, so, um, you know, that, you know that my mom's around. My dad passed away 14 years ago. So uh -huh. I remember when they first played the, our first video on MTV, Dream of a Lifetime, my dad was a kick. Because he's, I was born when he was 18. So he was always young. He brought me to my first Alice Cooper concert. Yeah, all right. And um, so the night that Adam Curry was introing, uh, hold on <laughs> that it was introing the, um, the video, Dream of a Lifetime, uh -huh. I had this premonition that something was going to happen. <laughs> There's going to be some kind of screw up, man. It's going to just all of a sudden, you know, back and that was probably videotape back then. Yeah. You know? It's just going to snap in half or something. <laughs> My dad comes out, he's wearing shorts, cowboy boots, a bandana around his neck, and like some metal wristbands or something. <laughs> <laughs> <What is awesome? laughs> yeah, we're so they were always really proud of me, you know. Um, um, but just to go back on that, um, like 30 seconds into the video, first time debut on MTV, uh -huh. it blacked out for like five of seconds. Of course it did. And I, came back home. <laughs> I was like, you know. I can be Nostradamus when it comes to things like that, yeah. but I can't get the, uh, the Powerball. <laughs> right, right, right. You're just you know? wasting so, it on that. I can't believe it. My, I have selective uh, <laughs> prophetic abilities, I guess. You know? so, but they, they've always been really, really uh, overly supportive, you know. Um, so I, that's, that's fortunate. That's, that's that's people really don't good. have that, the, uh, the, the support. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of them uh, really some of the most talented people that uh, are going to be musicians are just deterred about by their parents because exactly. of yeah. of, I, I don't, of ignorance it's it's a bad lifestyle it's right. drugs well i'll tell you what i do i have a seven-year-old so uh -huh. i you know the older you get in life the more you realize a lot of your parents stuff was right on right right maybe they the way they i guess they the way they uh transmitted these feelings might have been a little bit different than what you would like them to do but it's most of the time that's because they just scared for you yeah. you know like I, I had some moments when my parents were like you got to cut your hair and you got to get done i'm like <laughs> yeah i can't I got, you know i went to college for two years and i quit because i was on the road i yeah. was playing and and i couldn't dedicate myself to both of those things at the same time. I was in pre-med. I'm like, I'm oh, not going to be a doctor. Right. Then I was going to be a lawyer. And I'm, I can argue very well, but I am. Not, it's not my lifestyle. Yeah. I've been playing guitar since I'm six. This is what I'm called to do. So, and um, and and they, and my, I remember my dad being upset about it, you know, because but he was just worried about me because right. I was the oldest of nine kids, and my dad worked his tail off multiple jobs to make sure that we all had good education and this and that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I can understand that. What I don't understand is, is, is that when parents don't want their kids to do better because they're trying to live, you know, they didn't have a chance. Yes. And they're taking their yes. hand I mean, let me tell you something, there is nothing more important or closer to my heart than my kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I eat my own arm off for them, you know. So, so when I look at things like that, it's kind of like, you know what, and, and I'm, I'm tough on them. I'm like, look, son, you know. Edu you know, he's in first grade. And I'm like, yeah, education. Education. <laughs> What's your hair? Where's your homework? Yeah. <laughs> and he's playing Minecraft. Like, damn, yeah, I'm come on the twenty seventh level of fifteenth universe, and I bet you proud of me. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, actually, you know, it's like I couldn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? right. yeah I know. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much, Steve. Oh, I know you're pleasure, a busy man. guy. And